Visit SayRight.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. Hi, Eric Grant from SayRight. In this video series, we're going to show you how to redo an entire power boat, the upholstery, the flooring, the side panels, and more, including this motor cover, and make a used power boat look brand new. It's true, you can buy a used power boat and save thousands compared to buying a new one, and you can make the entire thing look brand new, just like we did in these videos. In this video tutorial, we'll be showing you how to reupholster the side panels. This is a look before, and this is a look afterwards. Let's get started and show you how to reupholster your side panels on your speedboat. The first step is removing the old vinyl. To do that, we need to remove the side panels. And it's not going to raise up, so there's probably some fasteners under here. Yeah, here I can feel, there's a bolt and a nut here, and there's probably some over here. Yep. They're bolts and nuts, so we'll have to use a, a uh, socket or a wrench to get this off. Hi, Eric Grant at Sayrite. Today we're going to show you how to reupholster an upholstered panel. And this came off of a power boat. Um, it has actually been painted a few times. If you look at the back side, uh, it was painted red. I don't know what the original color was. And then it was painted white. And even this black here. Uh, has been painted. Um, so it definitely needs redone. So it's on um, kind of like a plastic or a starboard uh, instead of wood, which is very nice because it doesn't rot. So first thing to do is take off the speaker and then to take off this piece. Okay, this piece just uh, had some uh, bolts and lock washers and washers. And you can see that this top piece is uh, sewn in. Uh, then on the bottom, they just pulled it over and around. Because we're going to use a four-way stretch vinyl, it should uh, na enable us to pull this around this uh, perimeter here. But we are going to create a separate piece for this. So the first thing to do is the one job that I don't like doing is removing the old fabric via the staples on the back side. So once this is removed, we'll show you what's next. Okay, so we have the staples removed and I, I like to use something that doesn't poke me. So I'm just going to use the uh, pliers and pull this off and inspect it. Hopefully I'm in. So this is so foam, thin layer of it. And I'm going to take it off. It's actually wet down here at the bottom. And we can see that there is a plastic case with some foam inserts that are laid in the plastic case and this actually collapsed here. This is supposed to go up, I believe. We'll see if we can repair that. <laughs> Let's take it off. So turn it over and you've got the terrible job of removing staples. Now some of the th this can be done sometimes just by releasing a little strip of, of the fabric and then you can either use pliers if you don't want to get poked. I'm going to cut this and then I'm going to grab it and hopefully we'll be able to pull it. Yeah, that's coming off. So the fabric I might have to do this a little bit for. Anyway, this is the task. Remove the old vinyl and any staples that are sticking up. Most of our projects we replace the foam because of black mold and other things such as compression. But there are some instances where you can repair it. And that's what we're going to show next. Okay, I know that this is supposed to go up here because I can see the staples that bent. If I take the foam out, it looks like the foam was actually made to fit in there, but this just collapsed. Over time it compressed because it was like that. So what I had to fix this, because it was really stiff, I just used a clamp here and put it on the edge of the table. And then I'm going to use a stainless steel screw and screw it to the bottom. Now that we have this repaired, we need to fill in this uh, foam here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this chunk of foam and it's a little bit too thick but I'm going to glue it to this and then I'll shape it. So let me put some spray glue on this and then a little bit on this. You can use all kinds of spray glue for foam. I'm just using the headliner adhesive. It's available from Cerite. Got to let it tack up and then we'll glue it together. Once it becomes tacky then I'm going to stick it to this like so and then I'm going to trim off the top. 
I'm just going to use an electric kitchen knife. That actually works pretty well. So, how does this fit? It's probably going to be tight, but that's okay. Okay, because this is a little bit lacking here, as far as shape goes, I'm going to build it up by taking this out and putting some uh, sew foam. This is a quarter inch sew foam, a half inch would work as well, but I'm going to build it up until it's flush with this top. Yeah, that's more flush. We're also going to put sew foam over the top to give it a more uh, gradual shape to it. I'm going to probably glue this in place just to make sure it doesn't move around on us. A little bit rough here. This sew foam will help it. This is a quarter inch sew foam and if I'm not sewing through it, this is the fabric side that helps to pull, keep the stitch from pulling through the foam. If I'm not sewing through it, I actually put the foam up against this side of it. So this is going to go on like this and it's going to be glued in place so that it wraps around a little bit to the back side. So right about there should give us plenty. So I'm just going to mark basically where I want to lay it so I know. And then I'm going to spray. I also have to spray on the outside because this goes over the edge. And then I got to spray this on all sides. Okay, when the glue becomes tacky, we're going to put it down onto our piece. And then we're going to wrap this around the edges. Like that. And over here. Like that. <coughs> Up the sides. Looks like I don't have enough glue there, but it, it'll be enough because the fabric will kind of hold it in place. And then I'm going to just um, <coughs> crease the corners and then we'll cut that off, that little dog ear. And up here. I'm just going to cut straight down basically into that corner. Cut that off and that's what it looks like. We'll do that to all the corners. Now I've got a little bit of a little raised piece there and what I do is I trim this carefully following the contour. There we go. Nice. Okay, so I've looked over this foam and I'm going to reuse it the way it is, uh, except for here we have the foam's been compressed down and um, I can't get it to go back up. So what I did is I used Duraskrim pattern material and I got the basic shape of that. And then I took a one inch foam and trimmed it to size. And I'm going to glue it here. And then after it's glued securely, we're going to shape it uh, with a cerite foam shaper. So I'm using the headliner adhesive and I will spray this section well and the back of the foam well. Okay, we let that tack up and then we'll glue it together. So glue, the glue is tacky on both surfaces and we'll stick it down. You do have a little bit of working time to position everything. Okay. So our next task is to get this to take the same shape as the foam that's already on there. This is the Cerite foam shaper and what I'll do is I'll just basically whittle it down until it uh, is almost the same shape as this other one. This is actually kind of fun. It does make a big mess. Okay, so we've been doing this for a little while and I think that's about perfect. If you feel that this is a soft foam actually, this is pretty soft too. So this should compress nicely. We are going to put a sew foam on top of this, but now we have that foam repaired and shaped to the general thickness of the transitioning foam beside it. There are two ways to order your sew foam from Sarite, at least now. One of them is rolled 
and the other one is rolled, folded, and then compressed, which results in this type of so foam. Now it's a lot cheaper because it obviously is smaller to ship. It doesn't isn't so long. You don't get those restrictions, but you will have so foam that looks like this. So it's your choice. You can order it either way. This is a quarter inch so foam, and it was rolled, folded, and compressed to make shipping less expensive. I just wanted you to see what it looks like. I'm gonna cut this to the general size, obviously oversized, and uh, let's talk a little bit about what side of the sew foam is gonna be up or facing the outside. If I'm using the rolled uh, sew foam, I don't have to worry about wrinkles. Flip this over to the fabric side, and you see all these little wrinkles from compressing it? Those wrinkles may show up if it's the outside surface. Uh, usually I only have this side uh, facing out if I'm sewing through it. But in this scenario, since this was compressed, I have to have this side uh, with the glue and then the board. This is our board. We'll be facing the fabric side like that. Okay, so we have to take this off and apply glue. Now you don't have to have the sew foam. You could actually just stick with the, with the foam that's already on there. But we're gonna put it on because it kind of sometimes usually smooths things out. And we got a lot of wrinkles from this compression. Now I'm gonna use the headliner adhesive. You could use general trim adhesive. You can use um, the super trim adhesive. You can use the foam lock spray adhesive. There are other all types of uh, glues that you can use for this. We're going to spray this surface and we're also going to spray the surface of the uh, backer board that we're going to apply it to. Any overspray, I'm going to use 3M adhesive remover and a rag to get it off the table. The spray adhesive must become tacky before it's bonded to the surface that you're applying it to. Okay, once we have it down, we're going to take this and I'm going to flip it over. Because it's been compressed, we have to try to smooth it all, smooth it all out. So you have a little bit of working time and what you're trying to do is get all these uh, wrinkles and so forth out. And as you can see, it actually is not as bad as you think. It, lo it looks like it was going to be atrocious, but it's not bad. So here's where that uh, piping was. So I'm just gonna smooth it out. If I see any wrinkles, I'm gonna lift it up. <clears throat> kind of pull a little bit. So now it's smooth, we're gonna flip it over. <laughs> and you can either use a pair of scissors uh, to trim it, or I'm gonna use the foam saw to do it. So I'm trimming about an inch away from this hard edge so that it wraps a little bit around to the back side. Let's now turn our attention back to the armrest that is attached to the side panel. This is Duraskrim pattern material and I want to pattern this top. I don't want to go off of their old one because it's more than likely their vinyl has stretched. So I just lay this over the top and I trace around it. Now, if, the, if these lines aren't perfectly straight, I will straighten them out. But I come down here and over to here. Now, on the back side here, I'm going to mark where this edge is, but we need to add extra fabric, obviously, to uh, pull the vinyl around. So I'm just going to come down here and we'll just say, hey, that's where it's going to end for the most part, even though this is the back. So now that that's done. We need to mark this. This is this would be the wrong side. Like that. Now I'm cutting right on my lines and I'm not adding a half inch because this fabric will stretch nicely. So we're making it to size. We obviously have extra fabric here at the bottom. So when we put this pattern back on and then I fold this over the edge you can see that there's some fabric that hangs, that, uh, that basically needs to be trimmed away if you follow this contoured edge. So I want to trim that away. Over here, 
yeah, over here it's pretty much straight on, so we're okay there. And this is labeled correctly, it says wrong side, this is the outside. Okay, that one's cut to size. I'm gonna make a plate for this as well. This time I'm using super 88 adhesive. 77 works well for this as well. And I'm gonna spray just this surface so that I can get the pattern material to stick to that surface. And then we can immediately put this down. Yeah, that would good. good. Now I wanna work out the wrinkles here. You can see there's some wrinkles in this. Great way to make a pattern. So I'm going to mark right on this edge, okay? I'm just following the contour of the shape. And over here, this comes down, and I'm going to mark this corner. You probably can't see that, but I pleated it basically. And we mark it up there like that. So that those two lines should come on top of each other, which they do. <clears throat> Down here, we need excess fabric. Over here, this is gonna wrap around to the underside. So we're not gonna do anything about that. Since I don't really have enough pattern material, I was hoping I'd have extra here. I'm gonna actually mark the back of this. And that way I know how much extra material I need to wrap around. So just marking right up against the edge. Now here, we're gonna have the top plate. So here we need to add um, two to three inches. I'm just gonna put two inches on this and then an arrow this way with two and an arrow this way with two. So I don't get confused. Now we can take this off. So on this one, we're cut, again, not adding a half inch to this. We're just going right against that uh, edge that uh, we marked. Since we're not adding the half inch seam allowance, the cover will be slightly smaller than the actual object it fits on, which will give a nice tight fit. Okay, so here's where that corner is. So I'm going to mark it. I put this back on the, the foam here. That's the corner. So I have all the patterns on and it says wrong side. You can't read it. It's wrong side here. This is where we made that little notch. And we need to make sure that we understand that the notch needs to match up with this corner here. Now you can put your notches anywhere you want. We just decided to put it at this corner. I mean, I could have it so there's a notch here and here to know where I need to match up the panels. But as long as you have a matchup mark, you should be good. We're using an Eversoft indoor-outdoor vinyl fabric that's exclusively sold at Serite. It's a four-way stretch vinyl available in a broad array of colors. The surface of Eversoft is phenomenal with a good feel and on the back side is 100% tricot polyester material that's excellent for strength and also for gluing applications. Again, Eversoft is available exclusively at Sailrite. So I have the wrong side facing up. I'm going to put some uh, Super 88 adhesive on the uh, fabric and we need to make sure there's two inches around the edges, at least two inches, and lay it down flat, make sure there's no wrinkles in it. And then we're gonna cut, this edge is right on that pattern, no seam allowance. And then we go out two inches over here. So I'm just gonna cut up to, to there. We have plenty of fabric. And that should do it. Now here at this, not this corner, I'm actually gonna take my scissors and make a triangle cut right there in the fabric so I know where that is. So now we're gonna do the same thing with this piece. That should give us plenty. Okay, we're gonna cut this out here and uh, we're just gonna cut right along here. We have extra at the bottom. This is our corner notch and that we put in. So we're gonna cut a triangle there so we can match it up to the adjacent panel. We'll cut this out all the way. These are our two panels and these are the corner notches. So outside surfaces would face each other and then these would line up 
and they would be sewing on like that. So let's take it to the machine and sew it. Those two pieces of fabric will now be sewn together. So here are two matchup marks. Outside surfaces are facing each other. I'm going to flip it upside down because I'm going to start down here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk this so that I know where I need to start at the bottom edge. So I'm going to hold my finger at the matchup marks and then just do this. And that should be our starting point. And what I'm going to do is an overstitch, which basically means that um, I can just concentrate on matching up the edge as I sew here. So I'm, I'm about an eighth inch or a quarter inch from the raw edge. And then I take up my uh, uh, pliers for fabric matching and I can hold on to the fabric, push down on the bottom layer of fabric, and then just sew along this edge. When I reach my pliers, I can stop. This is a straightaway, so this is pretty easy. But uh, when I get to the curve, you'll see what I mean here. So here I'm almost I'm to this curve, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to keep my hands out of the way for the camera, is I'm going to hold this, match up the edge, and this. The nice thing about this stitch is you don't have to worry about this stitch being perfectly straight, because all it's doing is just matching up the edge of the fabric. Here. Uh, stitch after this needs to be perfectly straight, but you won't have to concentrate on matching up the edge of the fabric. So as you can see, we can easily go around this corner uh, just by using these pliers and matching up the edge. As we go, we can do small stitches at a time. And again, I'm not worried about the stitch, I'm just worried about matching it up. Look at that. We're going around here beautifully. I'm using the pliers to pull the bottom panel. Now that I'm around that corner, I'm just going to use the pliers on the top panel and push down on the bottom panel with the pliers as we continue to sew around. Okay, so these uh, pliers help and this uh, will make the next stitch much easier. Okay, we're going to sew this all the way to the other end. So with the straightaways, I don't need to use the pliers. Pretty easy. Okay, after we're done with this, mat, this uh, overstitch, we'll show you what's next. So now I'm going to put uh, my uh, magnetic guide on the half inch of the needle plate, which gives us a half inch stitch. And now that this is all sewn together, um, this is almost just effortless now. Mm -hmm. So what I'll do is put it in here, and all I have to worry about is keeping this edge up against the magnetic guide here. I'm going to do a little bit of reverse in here. That's what the overstitch does. So now you can just concentrate on making sure that this stitch is completely accurate and smooth. Now when you get to this corner, keep the keep make sure the fabric is flat. So I will just make sure that I'm this little bump and so forth will be sewing out. You may be asking, is the overstitch required? No, it is not. The overstitch technique is more important for applications where there's a lot of shape. In utilizing it, you can concentrate on matching up the edge of the fabric and securing it. Then you can come back later and sew your seam allowance. So I'm going to move my magnetic guide and I'm going to turn this right side out and I'm going to create a top stitch in this. This is just a semi-flat felled seam. So, and I'm going to have the seam, this is the top panel, I'm going to have the seam in the side panel. So I'm going to push the seam allowance down this direction into the side panel. And I could put on my left guide foot, but I don't think I need to. I'm just going to put it at the center of this outside foot on the right side, splay my fabric apart, and carefully sew this top stitch in place. Doing a little bit of reversing at the beginning. Anytime I make adjustments, I make sure the needle's buried. So I just want to smooth out the fabric. And if it's only an inch of smoothed out fabric, so be it. Remember, everybody's going to see this stitch, so make sure that you do it accurately. Make sure that your seam allowance is going the right direction onto the side panel, which it is. And we'll sew this all the way to the other end and do some reversing there.
In this chapter, we're going to staple that fabric cover onto the armrest base or frame. So now we can put our armrest inside the cover. And what we want to do is we want to try to get this seam in the right spot, right along this edge. So right there looks like it's right where I want it. So I'm going to put a staple back here. We can pull that out if we need to. And then I'm going to do that over here, pulling down. There we go, that's better. I'm just trying to get in the right spot and then we can start tensioning it. Put a staple here. I'm going to work this top on first. Once I get it in the spot, then I'll show you how I tension it. So I have this where I want it to be, um, and now I'm going to concentrate on working and pulling this direction nice and taut. And we'll put a staple here in the middle first. And then we inspect to make sure that it's tight. And then let's put one here, over here at the end at the middle position, pulling taut. And then back here. Here's the corner. And what I'll do to get rid of the fabric is I'll find that corner and then I just strike a line basically coming out from that corner. I don't know if you can see that. And then what I do is I cut a little bit on each side of the line almost to the backer board. Like that. And then we can cut this out to create a 45. like that. So that cuts down on the bulk of the, at the corner. And obviously we, we can cut out even more because it, it's not um, directly over top of each other. Just don't want to cut out too much at the beginning. So that's pretty good. So now I can pull this taut and I can put a staple here. And then I can pull this taut. Looks like we can cut out a little bit more here too because this isn't going to be visible. Let's just cut out sort of right to here. There we go. Get rid of this little chunk. Pull this taut. Put a staple there. And then I can take this corner and pull on this tab here. Looks like I can put that down too. Pull this and okay. So that takes care of that. And we'll continue to tension around the perimeter, pulling taut and stapling. This corner is not bad to do because it's basically been patterned. So we can just pull all the wrinkles to the back side <coughs> and staple it in place. Now just trim off the excess fabric around the perimeter <coughs> and we'll be done. Going back to the side panel, we'll lay our teak colored fabric underneath it and start to cut it to size. In the middle, there is going to be a piece of black fabric and I'm feeling it on the underside and going outside of it by a good inch or two. So technically I just need to pattern or to cut the fabric from here to here and then we'll have a second half on the other side 
because we're going to have a black piece going that direction. <clears throat> so I have um, a good amount of fabric so I can wrap around to the back side on all edges. And we'll just do that, cut it to that general size here. You don't have to be extremely accurate, you just have to have enough to wrap around. Right to there and then we'll cut across there. Okay, we're doing the same thing over here. This is the black piece, so I have plenty of fabric there. And we're going to cut it to the general size, leaving excess. Okay, so I can feel the transition here. And it's right here. So I'm going to mark um, here and here, and then I'm going to find the angle on this side as well, and that should be accurate. So I'm going to move this out of the way, so I'm going to strike this line all the way across here and also here, and we do need to add a half inch seam allowance. So I'm going to mark a half inch outside of that line, and this will be our cut line. And then a half inch outside of this line, and that will be our cut line right there. I'm going to put some sandbags on the top of this so it doesn't move. And we do want to measure and make sure that these are the same, ten and a half, ten and a half. This is our tan piece, this is our black piece, joining the tan piece so the black piece goes down. This is just a scrap piece. Lay it over here, making sure that it's within the lines. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to extend these lines right like that. And unfortunately there's not much to mark there. And over here. These marks I'm making will be our seam line. However, I accidentally cut on Good. them. So I'm going to transfer these lines all the way over once I move these out of the way. Lines should also be added a half inch outside of them, which I did not do. Now, one of the other things I want to do is lay this back over and just put a line here where they are coming across and I'm inter where they intersect. And I'll just call this one A so we know and this one B. There we go. Whoops, the A should have went over here because I'm going to cut that off. So we're going to cut this, this on these lines. Actually, those lines are our seam lines. It should have been cut a half inch outside of those lines. So this panel is a little bit small, but it still will work. We're going to dress it up with piping. That's next. Okay, so make sure you sew it on the right side, which is this. And I have plenty of material, so we can just start it here because that that's extra material and I just want to match this up to the edge and sew this on. Okay, we're using the quarter inch piping foot for the Sayrite Fabricator sewing machine. And that's plenty right there. I'm not even going to do any reversing because we're just putting that piping in. We're going to cut the piping here. See, we're almost into our black, but it will be enough. And we're going to put piping on this side in the same manner. Our piping is sewn onto the black piece. We flip it over. There's where the A gets sewn to this. So outside surfaces will face each other and we will match it up to that mark we have there and sew these together. There's the mark. There's the A and the A. So we know that we're in about the right spot. Much of this amount of fabric at the ends will be wrapped around our backer board and stapled to the back side. So that's why we're talking about not having uh, to have the piping go all the way to the edge because a lot of this is not even going to be seen. This piece is sewing on. Now this looks really weird. So when I flip this, you're like, holy cow, that's not going to go together. This is B, this is B. 
but it actually does go together. You just want to twist it like this and start it at your mark up here and then sew it down here. Now our side panel is teak and black in color. It's time to staple it to the base or the backer board. So we position this and I can feel the groove in here and we're, we're pretty close on both sides where the seam is. And I'm just gonna start in the middle here and I'll start here at the top where the, there's less fabric. And uh, I'm gonna secure it in place. And then we're going to pull fairly taut to make sure that everything is nice and tight. And put a staple here. Now I'm not stapling everywhere yet. I'm basically just putting preliminary staples in, in the middle. And then we'll come over here. I have plenty of fabric. Now this fabric at the corners is going to have to have some relief slits cut into it to, to make it go around this corner. And we are going to have to have some slits put in this. Now don't go too deep into this because you don't know exactly where they're going to end, but that will allow you to take this and turn it. We'll do the same thing over here. So now we can turn this around and it'll uh, take the tur turn. So I'm going to pull taut and I'm going to pull to the outside a little bit. Let's get that laying flat. Staple there. I'm gonna come over here, pull taut. In there. So once we have this middle section, the black with the piping in place, we need to staple down the piping because it just looks better. So I'm gonna flip it back over. And I'm gonna take this fabric and I'm gonna peel it back until I get to that piping, which I'm really close to right now. So there's the flange of the piping as you can see. And what we want is we want to push it, pull it against this side. So I'm pulling it over this way as far as I can. And then I want to take my stapler and I want to staple into the flange of the piping. I put quite a few staples in there to make sure that it was secured. Now we can bring this back over and pull on this and that pulls it up against this pretty nicely. And we did the same thing to this piping over on this side. So now we can flip it over and start securing it. Okay, once the middle is done, we're going to pull, lift up a little bit so that we can pull fairly taut on this. And I'm going to pull a little bit out to the left and right, but I want to secure it at the middle position with a, a couple preliminary staples and see if the position's good. So I'm just going to put two staples that are away from the edge. Those can be pulled out later. And then we're going to come over here and we're going to pull here, put two staples a little away from the edge. And up here we have tons of fabric. Now here I can pull a little bit tighter because we have uh, this side secured, but I'm directly across from it. And I'm going to put a couple staples here. Then we're going to come down here and we're going to do the exact same thing again. We're going to pull tight and secure it here, here, and here. It is roughly in position with only a few staples, but you want to inspect it and see if you're happy with everything. I don't expect all the wrinkles to be worked out, but we don't want any major uh, bubbles or excess fabric, and we don't have any, which is good. So I like the preliminary position of it, which means we can flip it back over again, and we can start securing. Where do you want to start? Well, I think what I'll do is I'll start kind of in the middle here, and work my way left or right. So I'm just gonna start really close to this black area and we're gonna pull it taut. And then once I get one side on, I'm gonna come over to the other side and 
make sure that it's taut. And we're just going to work our way down this piece doing this, checking it out every once in a while to make sure that it still looks good. We have an inside turn here and I've stapled it. I don't have tons of staples, I just have two, 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 and all the way across like that so we can make sure that we're happy before we put in a ton. But we have to cut this deeper. I'd never want to cut up into that and doing a few um, rather than just one will definitely make it uh, easier to make it go around that corner. So as you can see here, this allows it to take that turn and I can pull fairly taut, put a few staples in that. And this looks like it could use one more slit like that. We can pull this and I can feel over here to see if I like the way it, it feels. And I think I do. So I'm going to put some staples in that. This is how you want to do inside turns. That feels nice on that side. I can feel it. And that should accomplish our goal. Notice that I'm closer to the edge now. I'm not so far in because I'm pretty confident that this is uh, working well. That feels good. So we're going to continue to work around here. Now here, this is an outside turn and we'll show you what we do there as soon as I get to it. So one thing that can help here is we have way too much fabric here. Uh, and I'm going to just cut this away because we're kind of working with this corner. Don't cut too much away. But that will allow us to basically have less fabric to work with. Okay, so we have to have some wrinkles here. But what I typically do is I will pull and leave a little bit of a wrinkle there as long as I get this nice and tight. And I'll create a wrinkle on the back side, making sure that this side where my finger is, is nice and flat. So I'm distributing the excess fabric around this gentle curve. And as you can see, all the wrinkles are on the outside, not underneath. It's nice and smooth. This is a 90 degree turn. And what I like to do is I like to mark it basically out from the corner. So there's that line at that corner. And what I do is I cut about a half inch or so away from that line, almost down to the backer board. So I'm, what, a half inch away from the backer board on each side of that line, like that. And then I take this and I go straight across. So I'm cutting out, a, uh, <clears throat> basically making this a 45-degree uh, corner. So watch. What happens is this, actually I don't have enough cut here. This I want to cut so it's at a 45-degree angle to that corner. So see there? And this one almost comes on top of it. Now it doesn't have to land right on top of it, but it's kind of nice if it does. So I'll just trim away a little bit of that. Now what I'll do is I'll just pull until this corner looks good and put a staple on that side and then one on this side. Okay, so now we just take this corner and you pull it back here and see, see how that kind of finishes that corner. And then you just put a few staples there and we'll eventually cut away this excess here. So there's what that corner looks like. It just looks great. Now it's loose here because we haven't stapled it up on the side yet. Okay, we're going to keep stapling around the perimeter in, in uh, the way we showed you. And when we're done, we're going to show you what she looks like. And if we come up with anything that's new, obviously we'll show it. So you want to inspect it before you go ahead and put your piping on. Uh, we're going to put piping along the top edge and the two sides, not at the bottom because nobody's going to see that. And it does look really good. So now we're going to flip it over. I cut away some of the excess material here, but I need to cut away more of the material. And then anywhere that I don't have staples, at least an inch apart, I'm going to put a few more staples in closer to the edge. Adding piping around the edge is an optional step 
but we think it looks better that way. Okay, we're gonna put the piping on and I, I don't even, I, I'll come around the corner a little bit back here and we're just gonna staple it onto the edge and then we're gonna come around this corner and put a staple here and then we come back to the corner and put staples close to the corner and we just wanna walk this around the perimeter keeping it up against that edge so that it looks nice. Let's staple this on and I'll show you what it looks like on this side. Okay, we have it stapled to this point and I just wanna show you, whoa, the whole thing's falling off the table. But that's what it looks like. It, looks, it just dresses it up, makes it look nice. So this is where a speaker goes. So I'm just gonna cut an X, not going all the way to the edges. You may notice we didn't put piping on the bottom edge. That's not necessary really because it's not going to be seen. We put it on the top, the sides, and a little bit around the bottom corners only. And then what I'll do is I'll take some scissors and I'll cut almost to the edge like that and all these pie sections. So you can either take out a little bit of this foam, which isn't a bad idea, just don't cut the vinyl. So we're going to take out a little bit, leaving, you know, this half, half inch or an inch around the perimeter. So we're going to fold our staple up, or I mean our vinyl up, and we're going to staple it just to secure it in place. Now you don't have to worry about this raw edge here because it's that, that's where the speaker's going to go. Okay, this is where the um, armrest goes. So I'm just going to use an awl and punch a hole. Don't go through your fingers. And then we'll put this through those holes. Like so. We'll put the washers on. I hope these are stainless steel, I don't know. And then the lock washers and the nuts. And we're gonna reinstall this speaker, which really should be black. We're not gonna show that. Our upholstered side panel is now complete, ready to be mounted on the speedboat. Coming up next is the materials and tools list that we use to make this upholstered side panel. If you are replacing the foam of your upholstered side panel, consider using Cushionrite standard antimicrobial foam available from Sayrite. For ours, we simply repaired our foam, but that foam would work great for an upholstered side panel like this. We also used a four-way stretch vinyl called Eversoft available exclusively from Sayrite. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified of new Speedboat Makeover Series tutorial videos that are coming soon as we continue to take a speedboat that's old and make it look brand new using upholstery supplies and tools from Sayorite. I'm Eric Grant and from all of us here at Sayorite, thanks for watching.